Hello and welcome to my beginner's tutorial for Civilization 6 with all add-ons. In this video I explain the basic mechanics of the game and how to play, how to understand things for people who play a Civilization game for the first time. For people who need some help to get into it and to understand what's to do, what is good, what is bad and just how things work. Therefore, I will leave out some of the enhanced strategies. I will not go into higher difficulties. I will just explain how to play the game and how to understand it. Here, we start already with the game setup. First, the difficulty. The difficulty prints is normal. This means the AI doesn't cheat and you do not cheat either. If you go on easier, you get additional benefits making the game the game easier if you go higher up the AI gets benefits making the game harder for you I recommend if you play it the first time start on Prince learn on the level where no one cheats game speed standard is totally fine to learn the game the game is made mainly for standard speed continents is okay I would recommend to scroll down and go for Pangea Pangea is a little bit better balanced because everyone starts on the same landmass. Makes means you don't have to focus on naval warfare. You can expand the way you want. You will not be isolated. Neither will the AI. So you have people to fight wars against or trade with. So map size small is totally fine and disaster intensity. You can leave most things on default for your very first games. You can always play around with them once you understand the game more and understand what change this would mean. A map with more hills, mountains and volcanoes, well is that good or is it bad? You don't know, doesn't matter. You can choose your civilization. I recommend go for something that has an economic early game benefit. I will pick Gandhi. His playstyle is quite basic, you can play him in any way. For beginners, I would recommend mostly Rome. Rome is really good to learn the game because it's strong early and um, gives you a few passive boosts. Okay, here we are. This is our start location that we got. Now, there are things that could go into deeper detail where I could explain a lot of things to consider when making the decisions. But if you play this the first time, it doesn't make sense if I explain you every enhanced detail because you can't memorize all the stuff at once. I will keep focus on the more important things. If you still want further details for some things, check the description of the video. There I, there I have some links to other videos I made where I explain this a little bit further. For example, the very first thing is where is it good to settle and what should you take into consideration when settling. This can be very expansive and I could give you many reasons why to move, why not to move, why to restart, why not to restart. Here we just take what we have and I'll keep it to the basics. This start is okay, you can play with this. You have some forests, that's good, you have some hills, that's good. You have a river that's very good and you have a tile with a, a lot of food and some t some luxury down here that's good there could be more of that and that but it's okay we can deal with it always move your warrior first because the warrior will be able to maybe let you see something more if very important for the very beginning the movement of units you see in this game, you build up an empire. You may probably know this already, but you get you play through ages. We start in on turn one in 4000 BC, and we will play up to a time where we, if it go in the tech tree all the way to the future, where we have stuff like nuclear missiles and giant death robots. But here we start at the point where we even have to first figure out how to ride horses, how to build mines, and how to fish, how archery works. All of that is in the tech tree. 
I will get to that once we have settled. But first you move your warrior before you decide where to settle. Because sometimes your warrior, let's say move it on this hill. Ah, uh, okay, we did not see anything more. But sometimes you uncover something really good that you may want to settle towards. Just, it's the safe play. For this, this is all fine, I will settle in place. Now, before I go into research and city management, I will explain unit movement. This is a warrior. This is your basic early game military and exploration unit. The warrior has two movement and 20 combat strength. Combat strength is to defend himself and to melee attack other units like barbarians. Barbarians are units that are that are rude to everyone. Also, the warrior has two vision, so he can see two tiles far. Why doesn't he see up here? Well, that's because there is forest that blocks the vision. Can't see behind forest. Also, you can't see behind mountains or behind hills. Unless here would be a mountain, then you would see that because the mountain is taller than the forest. Also, if you are on hill, you can see over forest that is on flat land. It's, it's not that complicated. Once you play it a little bit, you will get used to it. Also, moving on forest or on hills takes more than one movement, which in the case of a warrior means he will use up all the movement, while on flat land he can move up to two tiles. Other units have different ways to move and a different combat strength. Now let's go and see what our city can produce. We can build a monument, this gives us culture. Culture is good for the civic tree, I will show that later. I could build a builder that allows me to improve the land around the city, so the city gets better over time. I could build one of those three units. I will expl explain them in a minute. The city currently makes 2.6 science, 5.3 uh, money, 5.3 production, 4 food and 1.4 culture. If I would build the monument and finish it, this culture would go up by one, because the monument gives me one culture. So, the production determines how fast I build these things. If we check on this button, we see what the city actually works with its population. It is population 1 to begin with. It will grow with food. Here it says in 7 turns it will grow. This means in seven turns I will have a second population. You can manually lock this or choose a focus on here and the city will change what it works, what it works on. Just play a little bit around with it and see what happens. You can also manually lock it on these. You see this one, this tile gives two food and one production, while this tile gives one food and two production. So if I go over here, I make more production and less food, means the city grows slower, but if we go on the production icon, we see the things, the builder for example, that would have taken 10 turns before, is now 8 turns. I recommend use it, leave it on default at the beginning. When you learn the game, default is fine and just let this game figure it out on its own. Sometimes when you notice a city is just not growing, then you should lock down tiles with a lot of food. Maybe just one or two are enough. Sometimes when you see a city is growing a lot, but not really working any production, like when it has 25 food, but only two production, then you may want to lock a few tiles of these hills. Further explanation to, to the a tile assignment in the video description, there is another video for it. Now here I recommend to go for the scout. This unit has 3 movement, that's more than the warrior has, but only 10 combat strength, that's half as strong as the warrior. It's cheaper though, it's great for the early game to explore the land, that's very important, because you want to expand your empire. A warrior is also a good idea and so is a slinger, 
but the scout is my get-go at the very beginning. Then we have to choose research and civics. We will open the technology tree. So what you go for is up for debate. That's a more enhanced discussion. And I think at the beginning you cannot do much wrong. I recommend that you check what land you have and what these tiles need, what your resources need. For example, you have rice here on a marsh. Rice needs a farm. Do you need something for a farm? Actually, no. You can build a farm from the very beginning. That's nice. What else do you have? We have copper over here. It says requires mining. Ah, okay. So copper requires mining to be improved. Mining is this technology. We could go for that. We have down here, even closer than the copper, marble, a luxury resource. You see the copper is a bonus resource and the marble is a luxury resource. The difference between those I will explain a little bit later. This requires also mining. So mining seems to be the right choice to go for. Now let's say we had a lot of cows or sheep, then we would probably go for animal husbandry because they require animal husbandry. But we have not a single cow or sheep around. And in here is the civics tree. Works exactly the same as the tech tree. You just explore your way through, just that it progresses with culture and not with science. That's why we have more cult more science than culture currently. This is why these takes are researched in 10 turns while the civics require 15 turns. We need the first one to unlock further things. So we no not much choice here, but later on we will have. The technology tree unlocks things like improving the land, building wonders, building better units, um, building districts, how districts work, I will explain a little bit later, and just some passive improvements and benefits to your land, to your units, and to, you, to what you can place, what you can build. While the civic tree unlocks also some passive things, it mostly unlocks cards that you can lock into your government. Currently, we don't have that yet, because you start with no cards. But once we have this in 15 turns, we will get our first cards, which I will explain when we get there. So this is the very basics. You just explore and figure out what to do. It's ver very simple. You move the warrior. Oh, I see. This desert has nothing on it. This desert has science and faith on it. This m lets me know that there is something nearby, something special, maybe a natural wonder. Because normally a desert doesn't have something more on it without a reason. These icons you can enable in here. Also these icons in here. You can also Enable the grid if you like the lines to, to better notice things. It's up to you what you like. Just try it out. I like to have these tiles on because for example like here I spot that there is something special and I have an easier time to differentiate between a hill and flat land. For example the tile I'm standing on is a flat land I know because it is only one production and one food. While this one has one production more this means it's a hill. Also, the tooltip, if you hover over it, will explain you that. Let's move further with our warrior. It was a fantastic landscape, for all around were rocks of the weirdest forms, standing in apparently impossible positions, some placed on or next to others, in ways that seemed to defy every law of gravity. Wunderbar. We have gotten a Eureka, and we found a natural wonder. This is great. This gives us error score. And of course, we really want to settle here because these tiles are nice. Look at this. This is one food, one production, three gold, two faith and two science. That's a lot of good stuff. We certainly want to settle somewhere here. But of course, we want to explore more. Then there was this pop-up, this Eureka, 
What is that? In your technology tree, just as in your civics tree, you see these marks. Everyone has these this this highlighted area. This is um, a Eureka, or in civics it has a different name, but it's the same thing, it's a boost. And you can get that if you do the requirement that is written below. For example, here to boost craftsmanship we need improve three tiles. And in here the one we just the one we just got, even though it doesn't show yet. It will it will update. It should update next turn. Find to boost find a natural wonder. It has updated. It is updated in here. Find a natural wonder. We got that. Found the city on the coast. We don't have that yet. This means that highlighted area, we will get that researched for free, making this cheaper. Ah, now it has. Before it was 20 turns, now it's just 12 turns, which is really nice. You want to try to get these boosts for all the things. I sometimes even delay finish researching a tech if I don't have the boost yet, especially if I know I can get it easily. For example, farm a resource. I know, I have rice here. I, when, once I build a farm on this, I will get the boost for this, for irrigation. So I will not finish researching. I will wait until I get the boost. Of course I can start researching it, because you don't start on the highlighted area, you start you push the highlighted area back so you can research the other part the same with civics exactly the same mechanic but for now we need to explore more exploration is key at the very beginning Now you see, oh, I can't move. The, the highlighted area here is where I can move. I can't move on this forest because the warrior has only two movement. And this costs him one and then he has not enough movement to move on a forest or on a hill. Because that would require two movement. But I can move down here. That's I will move here. And now I have the decision either to move further to explore this river or to move over here to see more of this hill. I will move down and see what's around this river. Exploration takes a bit of practice to figure out what's the best way. Take your time with making decisions. I mean, if you play the first time, just just look at the world, look at the map, see what is what is what. And, fe and if you don't mind reading, the Civilopedia is always helpful. Now we have a major drought in here. A major drought is a, um, a natural disaster that can happen since the latest add-on, the gathering storm add-on of civilization. It's a made a drought is a negative effect on the affected tiles for a limited amount of time. So here this drought just removes one food from every tile for a while. The drought will pass. So this is still a good place to settle. Just right now. <laughs> just right now, not so much. But in a few turns, the drought will be gone. Oh, nice. We found um, a tribal village. Tribal villages, when you enter with a unit, you get a goodie. This can be money, a free unit, a free boost to a tech or a civic or even an envoy which is something I explain later you want to take them as early as possible because once someone has taken the tribal village nobody else can it's something that gets removed which means if another player gets to it first well no luck for you I have no urge to explore quickly towards the north because I see there is tundra and tundra is less good than other terrains well tundra and desert desert is also not that great 
because desert has no tile yields while tundra has only one food and the tundra hill one food and one production therefore i have no urge to explore this early tundra is usually towards the north of the map and towards the south of the map well towards the poles so my scout will go to the east now since I know I can improve this rice very soon and I'm researching mining which will be done in four turns to improve this and this I will start on a builder oh nice we have found a city-state it blocks our tile we wanted to move on it's okay the city-state city-states are what is a city-state a city-state is a neutral civilization that is not one of the major civilization. So it's not like you with science and culture and all the fancy stuff. It's just something like a, a passive participant that you can influence and benefit from or that you can also conquer if you want a city. City states cannot build settlers, cannot expand, cannot declare war on their own. They are just here and they're passive. And I see there is another one. I can see the border here. City-state borders have small lines, small striped lines, not like the thick ones a, a major civilization have. And city-states only have one color, while civilizations always have two. Also, if you, if you have influence on the city-state, you will get benefits. For example, up here is the button for it a cultural city state disease and because i've met them as the first person i get free to culture in my capital this means i get one envoy for free up here you see how much envoys you have you will get more over time sometimes also with some civics or if you're lucky you get one in a in a tribal village and you can invest them in city states to improve the benefits that you get. Just read through the benefits you get from here. Also, if you have at least three envoys in a city-state, and at the same time more than everybody else, like other players, then you get a major benefit, which is unique for every city-state. Antananarivo, for example, gives your civilization 2% culture for each great person it has ever earned which is really nice. What is a great person? We will get to it. It's on this screen, this big huge screen. For now, we still want to scout and see the land. At the beginning I said rivers are very important. Why? Well, let's take first the goodie hut. Oh, we got foreign trade boosted out of the goodie hat. Let's move the scout. Whew, okay, mountains. So, river is important because it is fresh water, just like a lake. Rivers and waters and lakes provide fresh water. Fresh water gives you housing. Housing we currently use two out of six. A city on fresh water has more housing than a city without fresh water. Also, a city on coast has a little bit more housing than a city not on coast. What is housing and for what use does it have? Our city has population 2 and it currently is growing normally. You can also have city details which are rather enhancive and if you don't understand all the stuff that's here, don't worry, you don't have to. A nice little thing to know is you can rename the city up here. So if we don't want this to be named Delhi, but instead um, a good name. Basing Singh, the Earth Kingdom capital of Avatar. So here you see details. And what I will tell you now, which is important about housing. Housing is kind of a population limit. When you have six out of six housing, your growth 
will get a huge penalty and your city will grow very slowly. And if you go even, you can still grow, but it gets slower and slower. While you have enough housing left, your city will grow normally. And that's quite important to have at least some housing. This city has an easy time to get up to the population of five. If it were not at the river, the housing would be, I think, only two. So we would already get a penalty to our growth. But thanks that we are on a river, same would be with a lake we get the additional housing. Therefore, housing is quite important. There are not many ways to improve housing. The easiest way to improve housing is, besides of settling at a river or a lake from the very beginning, is here the granary, because this building gives you two housing and is available quite early. Here is a barbarian scout. I don't know where that this guy came from, but I will not fight him because he is not a danger to anything. He's not close to my city and I really want to find out what city state this is. If you remember, if you are the first to discover a city state, you get a benefit. You get a free envoy. The free envoy that allows you to get something for free in your capital. We are now much faster for code of laws because we now Instead of one point something something, we get 3.7 culture. Scout requires more movement. I think I will send him somewhere here. You could also send him up here. Both would be fine. But we found another tribal village. We certainly want to send him there. I recommend to not scout too far from your city with your warrior. Separated from law and justice, he is the worst. Well, why... I clicked it away quickly. Why not scout further with the warrior? The problem is sometimes you have barbarians nearby. And then you need your early warrior to defend your city. To go for that barbarian encampment. Currently we are lucky that no barbs came up to my city. But if you're not lucky and you don't have your warrior around you will have a tough time. That's why I will not go further south with this warrior. But I will for sure explore this city-state here. Yerevan, and we are first. We see here, we got one for free, which means two faith in our capital. Before we didn't produce any, now two faith. That's really nice. Also, this one told us something. This is the government. Here you can lock in cards. You see the cards you have, red cards in the red slot and brown cards in the brown slot. Since I produce already faith, I will not put in God King. Production is so much better. Faith is only useful if you don't produce any to get a pantheon. What a pantheon is and does, I will explain a little bit later. Don't worry about it for now. In here, if you're not sure which to choose, choose discipline. You never know when you run into barbarians, and this helps fighting them. We also have to pick a new research. Let's see if we have horses. We don't need the granary yet because we have six housing and we're still slowly growing. You also have to choose a civic now. I will go for the one that I have already boosted. Don't worry if you're not sure which civic or technology to pick at the very beginning. Because it, it usually doesn't matter very much when you're still learning how to play the game. We got a free builder. Wow, that's very lucky. I will not move with the scout over here because I want to cross the river next turn and crossing the river takes all your movement. The scout will immediately go towards this rice. At a scout, I mean a builder. 
to improve it. Builders improve the land. You even see what the, the game recommends you. Don't follow what the game recommends you. Improve your resources first. Because a builder has only a limited amount of builds. After he has improved three tiles, he cannot, he disappears. He cannot improve anymore. Repairing a tile that has been damaged, for example, by a barbarian, costs nothing. It, you just need to have a builder around. Now we cross the river and it costs us all our movement. Oh, now the game has informed us there is a new barbarian outpost. This could become a danger. If, if this barbarian finds with his scout our city, it will spawn units that will attack us. A barbarian encampment is not like a civilization. It cannot settle cities or anything. It has just this little camp outlined with these, with these pikes and it will spawn a scout that will search around for people to assault. And once it has found it, it will return to the camp and then the camp will spawn a lot of units that come to your city to raid it and to take your builders and your resources and everything. Bad. Better send a warrior there before something bad happens. Therefore, I will not explore further around here. I will send my warrior to deal with this. While the scout goes scouting. Nice! We found a card. But we were not first with our card. So no free envoy in here. Otherwise we would get two production when producing units. Which is really nice. But someone else must be nearby. Because someone has found a card before we did. Here we will improve. We can improve a farm. Gives more food. And the boost for irrigation. Which I told you earlier about requires farm a resource. We just did that. Next we will improve the marble, the luxury resource. This is really good land, a lot of resources around. What is the difference between a bonus resource and a luxury resource? A luxury resource provides you with amenities and it can be sold to other players. Obviously selling a, something to other players gives you money, which can be used to buy things. For example, instead of building things, I can also purchase things, rather expensive but can be very useful. And what are amenities that this luxury resource give? Well, if you're not selling it, but keeping it, it gives you amenities. And amenities are something like happiness for your city. Where if your city is in here, you see, I have one amenity of one, status content. This means I will get no penalty and no bonus. If your city is very happy because you have a lot of amenities, you will get bonus to production of everything. But if your city is not happy if you have, because you lack amenities, because you have less than required, your city will get some penalties. It will grow slower and it will produce slower. Don't worry too much about amenities and often it's worth selling them instead of keeping them because with the money you can do a lot of things that help you more than just a little bit of amenities. If you have played Civilization 5, happiness is a much bigger deal over there. Don't play this like say 5. Amenities do not matter that much. We can change the policies again because we have new cards, but I don't think that they are any useful right now, so I will not change anything. Alright, I finished another builder, therefore I will send this one to this, because this one is closer, and this one could improve, could build a mine somewhere, maybe here. 
we need to build something new in the city. And since we have really good land over here and over here, I would recommend build a settler. Early settlers are really important. It's what gives you, a, what gets you the lead. It's important to settle the land early. Of course, if I had already barbarian issues, I would recommend build a warrior and maybe a slinger. But since we have only one barbarian encampment and our warrior is already going towards dealing with that, we should have no problems. Therefore, an early settler. Especially if you've already explored good land that you want to settle. Then go and build a settler early. To be able to build a settler, your city needs to be at least population 2. Our city is population 3. And it will be 4 in 6 turns. Once you finish a settler, you will lose a population. Don't worry about that, it's fine to lose a population every now and then. Especially if you have a strong food tile like this, the city will grow quickly again. It's more important to have more cities instead of one big city. I will start to research on this. As you see, I have on none of them a boost. So I will just start on one and change them to another one. An honor to meet you. Exchanging information means we both see each other's capital. I usually do that if that option comes up so I see where they are. Washington is over here and we found a warrior of him. This means this land in here that's so good is a little bit hard to get because he may want it too. I may settle here before I settle here. He sends me a delegation, that's very nice, that's a little bit of money. He seems to not dislike me, that's good. On higher difficulty, it's very hard to please the AI. I want to see the land around here. Because this is far, f further south is still very close to him, but very far from me. While the stuff in here is just in between us, so I want to see if I need to rush a city here before he does. I will build a mine in here and this guy will go and build a quarry. I will ignore this scout and just go directly for the camp because I want to get rid of that. And our card in here will help me with that. No dogs in heaven. Also we have discovered horses now. We can see on the map if we have horses. Not lucky, no horses. No horses. If there were any horses, they would be revealed now. I will attack this. A warrior is stronger than a spearman. And you can always heal between turns. Let's go for pottery to unlock the granary. You always see on the bottom how the game predicts the outcome. Pay attention to that. It may help you to not uh, do dumb attacks. Don't worry if it still happens. I'm not sure if this scout would take me, so I run away and wait to improve that. Because I really don't want the barbarian scout to steal my builder. This one, I move into the city and let him sleep there for later use, because I have nothing I want to improve except for this tile. So much good land. This is now with the exclamation mark showing that this scout has found our city and will now run back to his barbarian encampment and once he's back there the encampment will start spawning barbarians like mad. But we are already here killing the camp. If he has discovered your city, but the camp is destroyed before he gets back, he will just be a normal ravaging barbarian. He will still be mean, but he will not spawn friends. 
He moved to this side. I hope there is not another barbarian camp in the fog. Because that would be very bad. This is the only path s through these mountains as I see. Interesting. Let's kill this one. Nice. We got a boost because barbarian camp outpost was, a, was one requirement. And some money. You get 40 bucks out of a barbarian encampment if you clear it. I will let... Ah, oh, this guy has a promotion. I could let him heal or I better give him the promotion now. A promotion gives you a bonus that is written here. Battle cry is really good. And the promotion also heals your unit by 50 health. Really nice because I was damaged. I have to bring my warrior back because two scouts are here and they are bringing me some trouble. And I want to bring out the settler which is finished very soon. In Ah, uh, this barbarian has no encampment anymore. Oh, and we were super unlucky over here. The flood damaged our warrior. He's still strong enough to fight barbarians though. We have our settler now, but we cannot really move him out. Let's bring the warrior home. This guy will go this way. Here it tells me, oh, I'm very close to, to finishing this. So I will change now. And I will build another settler. I'll bring the builder out and leave the settler in here. I can't have two civilian units on one tile. Just as I can't have two military units, the one with the circle, on one tile. Yes, even a scout is considered a military unit. No man ever now it took my builder. See, it's now red, means it's his. But my warrior should be able to take it back. Make sure that you protect your units or run away if there are enemies. That's why I also bring slowly my scout back, so my scout can protect them. A unit can only be stolen if it's undefended by a military unit. More research. Let's go and unlock writing with the campus so I can explain how that works. We also got a pantheon because we reached above 25 faith. A pantheon allows you to get a passive benefit for all your cities. For example, I could get plus one culture for every pasture, if I had pastures. There are a lot of pasture options over here, but in my city I don't really have it. I will soon have a marble, which is a quarry, I could go for stone circles, would give me two faith for that. Just read through them and then decide based on the land you currently have and on the land that you probably will get which one is the best. Right now it's a little bit difficult because this starting location is not amazing, it's just okay. So I have no obvious get go here. Well, I could go for, if it's still here, Earth. Earth Goddess. From Tiles with Breathtaking Appeal. That's a little bit a more complicated mechanic. Here, Appeal. You see, um, the dark green ones have Breathtaking Appeal. Those tiles would get two more faith. What does affect Appeal? That's a bit complicated. And the feel is a late game thing. Because you see, here you see what gives appeal and what 
takes appeal. For example, rainforest, marsh and floodplains give negative appeal, while mountain, coast, woods or oasis give positive appeal. If you're not sure which one to pick, to pick Divine Spark is always good if you want if you want a religion. I will explain religion in a separate video in the description a little bit further. Just as I will explain the culture victory in another video a little bit further. A different kind of victories are very important. How do you even win this game? I explained so much on how to play and what to think about. How do you win? Here you have the world rankings. Here you see how you rank in different kinds of victory types. At the very beginning, don't pay much attention to this. But it's important to know what you need to do for a specific victory. Domination is probably the one easiest to understand because it means nothing else but kill everyone else. Or to be more exact, conquer the capital city of every other major nation. This means I will need to conquer Washington and all the other capitals. The science victory means you need to research certain techs and then build spaceship parts and wait a certain time. Sounds super complicated, is not very complicated. You just need to get all the way through the tech tree to the late game, get some of the techs up here and build the spaceship ship things and also the other important space parts. Like you need to launch an Earth satellite, you need to launch the moon landing, you need to launch the Mars colony, and then you need to launch some further things for that. And once you have done all of that, you win the game. That is science victory. Of course, as the name inclines, having a lot of research is important for that. But don't worry in the very beginning, don't focus too much on research. Get your cities out first, because more cities means more research later. Similar with culture, you focus on culture. But culture also requires tourism. Some things provide tourism, like, nat like wonders that you can build. They are also unlocked in the tech tree and the civic tree. For example, here we have the Temple of Artemis, the Hanging Gardens, the Stonehenge. Natural, all these wonders can provide you with tourism. Also, there are some civilizations that have other unique factors that give them tourism and art that you can produce later on will also provide you with tourism. Once you have a lot of tourism, you can win the game by impressing all the other nations so much with tourism that everyone loves you. And there is also the religious victory, which is very simple. Just convert everyone to your own religion. Very simple. How the religion explains comes another point at another time. Then the diplomatic victory. Here you have diplomatic favor. That's some sort of resource. Don't worry about it too much. There will be votings every few turns. They start a little bit later in the game. And at the end you can even become the one that has been voted the most diplomatic person, the most, and win the game by that way. You need 20 diplomatic points for that, which means you need to win like 10 diplomatic votings. It sounds complicated, but it's actually very easy when a voting comes up. But don't worry about that. I would recommend for beginners to try for the science victory. The science victory is the easiest to learn the game. While domination victory is also very doable, it focuses a lot on war and not everyone understands war at the very beginning and fighting a war and losing can be frustrating. So I would recommend aim for the science victory. I mean you can aim for both and just go for the one which you find easier to do. And once you've pulled that off, try other victory types out.
I will smack this barbarian. The warrior will heal a little bit. Healing, a unit heals when in enemy territory, five hit points per turn. When in neutral territory, 10. When your own territory, 15. When in your own city, 20. See, 15. We switch those two, and this guy will heal a little bit. Someone has built the Great Bath. I will not switch away from this because I know I can get it right now. Improve three tiles. We have improved these two and we'll improve now the third tile, giving me this inspiration, this boost. Oh, and masonry also because I built the quarry. Very nice. I see no barbarians around here. Therefore, I will scout a little bit around. I want to keep vision ahead of the settler. If there were barbarians nearby, I would of course send the warrior or the scout with the settler to be always on the same tile so the settler doesn't get stolen. Feel free to just reload the game when something bad happens. That's the best way of learning. Escape and just load game. And here you have auto saves. Just if something bad happens, reload make a different choice and see what happens because that way you learn what your choices for had an influence on the game you see i didn't see much further before because on these two hills were jungles and forests but now that i'm standing on it i can see further settling decision without craftsmanship Inspiration is I can attack this one. You can change the government cards every time you unlock a new civic. Also, when not unlocked, you, you can still change it, but it costs you money. Try to time if you want to change cards with when you also unlock a new civic. Right now, I don't want to change because I like the ones I have. Also, we'll smack this barbarian and move the settler. Now, oh, loyalty. Hmm. Because this is his capital. This is very sad that he has great land. The problem is, I cannot settle directly in his face even though I want to because the land in here is super good but the fresh water highlighted in green is all over here and these are all gray green tiles mean you have better housing there gray tiles means you can settle there but you will only have two housing bad red tiles means you can't settle on them which means, for example, obviously, mountains and volcanoes, you can't settle on them. And the other red tiles are just too close to another city. It doesn't matter if city-state, other player, or your own city. You always have to have at least three tiles in between. Loyalty means, this little number means, you will lose this much loyalty per turn. And when it's a lot, like 20, you will lose a lot of loyalty every turn. Once your loyalty drops to zero, the city will not be yours anymore. And if an other player has a lot of loyalty towards that city, it will flip to him. Which means if I would settle on one of these tiles where there is minus 20, I would slowly lose my city and America would get it very bad. What affects loyalty? Well, the distance to a city, that's why over here there is no negative loyalty, because this land is closer to my city than to his. Also, the size of a city. His, the, the, the more population in a city, the stronger the loyalty pressure is. 
I can of course try to move all the way down here and settle there. But I think I'll just settle another city here, so this city will start to have loyalty pressure on this land. And I may be able to get a city in here. We will see. This is also not a bad spot, I will get some salt, I have a river, this is, this is fine. And I can, can work on this. Here I will go for the monument, because it provides one loyalty. Hmm, I don't even need to go for the monument, I have lots of culture. No, I would recommend going for the granary. And maybe move a builder over here to improve the land. The warrior is done healing. I have seen some barbarians up here. I will send this guy up there. And in here I will go for... I want, civic wise, you want as early as possible political philosophy. You see, I need text, uh, civics for this that I did not have, that I just don't have boosted. But grow your civilization to at least six pos population is very doable. So I will research first on this and not waste my boost. Six population, I have one, two, three, four. I can get that in a few turns. And already we have a barbarian, let's kill him. Nice, we got a boost for that. I will not pursue this and I will scout the land down here. Because I would love to have a city here and here. But right now I can't put the city here because of loyalty. I mean, I could build a city in here. Minus three is not that bad. But it has no fresh water. How is the loyalty down here? You see it on the settler lands or when you click on a settler. Minus five, minus six. Hmm, I could work with that. Let's scout a little bit more in the north and see where that barbarian came from. Maybe there is another camp. We got our settler. In this situation, we are currently not assaulted by barbarians, so we don't need more units. But we have lots of good land that we want to settle. That's why I recommend just build more settlers. We could now also build our first district. This is the time to explain how districts work. First of all, we can just click on it to see what the game tells us. It shows us these little numbers. This means we get that much science when we build the district on that tile. So on this tile we get two science. On this tile one, and on this tile nothing at all. Of course we want to build it somewhere where we get a lot of science, that makes sense. Now how does a district work? A district is placed over the tile, which means all the benefits we get from the tile are removed. Therefore we for sure wouldn't want to build a district on a good tile. For example on this mine where we already have improved, we will not place the district there. Also, the district gives what the number that it says here, and in addition, it allows you to build buildings in the district, and it gives also additional yields per citizen, per population, which means in here two science per population. We have three population currently, so when we finish this, it would be six science plus the two from here, so we would get already eight science from that. That's a lot. But first build the settler. Don't rush into science. You don't have to build it very early. It's fine if you build something else first. A little trick that I will tell you though is when you place the district you lock in the cost. What the heck? What does that mean? What cost? The base cost. Districts get more expansive, more expensive the later the game is. Actually I'm not even sure anymore what makes it more expensive? But the point is, if you place a district and don't finish it, the initial cost gets locked in. What do I mean? I place this district now on this plus two because this is a good time. Done. 
Now I change the production back to the settler. Okay, so I'm not building this district right now. I'm not getting anything out of it. But the, con the, pro the, the price, the production cost it has stays the same. Even if I don't build it for another 50 turns, the production cost stays the same. While if I would start it in 50 turns, then it would be more expensive to build. That's why I place it early even if I don't intend to build it. Even if I will, even in this city, I can actually place a district as well. I could place it here or here. But what do these numbers mean? Um, why are there some places a 2 and some places a 1? I tell you why. If you hover over it, you see from what you get extra science. In this case, from mountains. Campus district get the best adjacency from reef, geothermal fissures and mountains. Now mountains is obviously what this is. So you may have already figured that this place is amazing for a science district. It has five mountains adjacent to it. Geothermal fissures, I don't think I have seen any. It's some kind of resource that you can find. And the reef is a coastal resource. But since we are in the middle of the land, no ocean anywhere, we don't have that. You can force the city to expand. As you see, it will take 30 turns to go here. Holy shit, that takes forever. And they really want to get this tile to place the district as soon as possible. You can purchase tiles. You see the cost? The cost goes up with time. Later in the game, the more tiles will cost even more. Also, the further away this, the tile is from the city, the more expensive it will be. I want this tile. Currently, we have 250 gold. That's a lot. So I buy this tile and this one is further away from the center. Therefore, it costs 90. But I will buy it. And now I can place the district. You will see plus 5 science. That's so good. I will for sure place it. Now I have to decide if I want to build the district first or maybe finish the granary first. But the city has five housing. That's a lot. It's just population one. I think it can finish the campus first and then build the granary later. The production that you put into this is not lost. It will just continue where it left the last time. You see it from the brown border. I will move this one over here to be ready to improve something. We have more to research. We could go for another district, the holy site that allows to get a religion. This is really the basics of the game. Building districts for science or culture or whatever because many of the districts have to be unlocked, like the science district, the faith district, the military district, or the, the money district. You see, there are some more specific districts, but they don't matter all that much right now. Also, one is in the culture tree, the theater square that is for culture. Just read what they give and play around with it. You can't do much wrong at the very beginning. Just play and learn. I will send this settler in this direction because I really want that. Oh, and we see horses down here. That's a resource that can be used to build powerful units. Nice, up here is also a good city because it has luxury silk and the luxury spices and also a good resource rice. Yes, it has some tundra, which is not that great, but it still has good tiles. I mean, three food, two production is really good. That's better than most I have in here. If I want, I could build buy this rice and improve it or the salt for a luxury. I know the salt requires a mine, so I will do that. 
Also, I could sell a luxury if I want. Let's see if America wants to buy something. This is the diplomat the diplo menu where you can see lots of information that is most of it totally irrelevant. But what is important, you can ask them for friendship. Sometimes they're like, yeah, let's be friends, that's cool. Sometimes they hate you. Don't worry too much about it. It looks more complicated than it is. But here you can make deal. And I can send him marble and ask him what he would pay. He would give me three gold per turn. That's not that much, but it's better than nothing. So I will sell him. If I had met more AIs than just this one, then I would, would just go and check what the others would pay me for that resource and then sell it to the one that pays me the most. Oh, there's a barb. I don't want to fight a barbarian warrior with a scout that is halfway damaged. I should soon bring this warrior back and maybe scout a bit over here. In 13 turns, I will get the boost for this. Hmm. Now we have again a luxury, which we could also sell. We can check how much he pays for this one. Still three gold. Mm, I decide to keep this one, to keep my cities happy. I've sold already one. Could I actually bring the warrior around here? Let's do that. Oh! What? My scout got killed. I didn't pay attention by what? Maybe there was a flood that killed him or a barbarian that I did not see, but my scout is dead. I will move away from state workforce because in 8 turns I will have this anyway. I will also not go for early empire because I will have that in 4 turns. Therefore, I will go for one of these. I will go for mysticism in this case. Probably doesn't matter much for which one I go. Just for one that I have not boosted yet. You see, the loyalty changed a little bit in here. There are better numbers now. Without my scout, I don't feel comfortable down there though. I should probably get another unit very soon. I'll bring this one around here and then bring another unit. I should prob I could buy one if I had the money. I don't. Or I could change production in here. I will play a little bit risky and just move carefully with the settler. What I could also do, since this builder only has one usage, I can send this one ahead to have vision at least, so I don't send in the settler blindly. Originally I intended to have my scout around, but sadly the scout died. I think he died to a flood. Rivers can flood. If you see, just the, the sprinkled land here, that means this, this is river land that can flood. Just like we had a drought over here, that has gone by now by the way. Got this technology. Let's pick a new one. Let's go for irrigation. Hmm. Minus 14 is really rough. Let's go for the minus 4 first. America likes us, we could make friends with him now. Means we cannot declare war on him, but we can settle towards him without him being that mad about it. I intend to settle here, right next to the horses. I could also settle on the horses. Settling on resources gives you the resources. It doesn't 
it doesn't remove them so it's quite good to settle on resources if I could I would settle on these dice but these dice are too close to a cut that's why I can't settle there but I for sure want to settle on the war on the river for the fresh water let's see if he wants to make friends because he's green here <coughs> Their friendship. Good. We have friendship now. Friendship means friends cannot declare war on each other. They have to wait until the friendship runs out. Um. Let's see. Just somewhere, somewhere it shows how long a friendship lasts. Hmm. I think it's thirty turns on standard speed. It maybe is 20 turns. I'm not sure. 20 or 30 turns. Oh, a barbarian encampment. Let's get rid of that. Now I will move the builder first. Okay, it's safe. So this guy can move after. Also, since I have a builder here, I will be able to improve the horses right away. Horses are a strategic resource. What is that? That means strategic resources are used to build units. They can also be sold. Make sure to not sell them to your enemies. Not sell them to peep to other AIs that don't like you, that are negative in here. Because they may want to declare war on you and they pay you less. While to a friend you can easily sell them. Unless, of course, you want to build your own horse units. For example, the horsemen. In here, the horseman requires 20 horses and has 36 melee strengths and 4 movement. Compare this to our warrior, which has 20 melee strength, so the horseman is much stronger and has 2 more movement. That's amazing, but it costs 20 horses. If we improve this, we will get two horses every turn. Once we have 20, we can build a horseman. This guy can wait until we have the copper or another resource to improve. Right now we work on fine tiles. We could also buy one, but I would recommend to keep the money around a little bit in case we need another unit since we lost our scout. We could also buy a scout very soon if we want to. I like to say I practice militant. Oh, we should have moved back to early empire to finish that. Now we have an envoy. An envoy can be sent to a city state. I will send it to Yerevan to become southern. This gives us error score. What is error score? Don't worry at all about error score if you just started with this game. Error score is rather complicated and has usually, if you don't fully understand it, little effect on your game. Error score is some score that you get out of things like discovering natural wonder, settling natural wonders, getting be the first to get control over city state, conquers enemy capital cities, improve specific land tiles, very specific things. And that's why you get era score. And if you get a lot of era score, you can get a golden age, which boosts everything. If you get not much era score, you may even get a dark age, which gives you penalties on everything. Don't worry about it. Usually you will get a normal age. I will make a video that is also in the description where I explain further how error score actually works in detail. Do we want to change anything in here? No. Purple cards can only be put in this slot, which we don't have yet. That's why we want early as early no 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 as early as possible the political philosophy because here you unlock government which has four card slots really good it was luxuries like air conditioning that brought down the Roman 
So this settler I want to settle in here. As long as we are friends, it means he can't declare war on us. So if he gets mad about this, well, whatever. Yes. Oh, woods, jungle and marsh get removed if you settle. But resources that have an icon will not. Horse are really good tiles to work with. We are losing loyalty in here. This means we would lose the city in 31 turns. But the city, if this city grows or this city grows, the loyalty situation will improve. We can also build a monument to improve the loyalty situation, which I will do right away. And we can also put a governor in here because with early empire, here is this little governor icon, even here which means we can appoint a governor that would also give us loyalty. I recommend get Magnus every time the first and then Pingala. These are the very best governors by far. You can read through all of them and make your own opinion, but Magnus is really good because this one and, th and this one. This is what you want and you will move him out a lot. Pingala is more self-explanatory because more science and culture, yeah, everyone wants that. And here even more culture and even more science. Holy shit, this dude is good. But we will go for Magnus and I will not even appoint him into Agra. He would give that city loyalty. Governors give a lot of loyalty to a city. I will move him into my capital. Magnus first promotion. Groundbreaker gives plus 50% yields from plot harvests. What is the plot harvest? If you remove a resource or forests or jungle, you get a boost called a plot harvest. And Magnus increases that boost you get by 50%. That's really good. And his second ability, this one, allows the city to not lose population when you build a settler. This means once I have Magnus on this, I will spam a lot of settlers out of the city. In other words, I will get no settler right now. I will get a builder because I want to do harvests here. Also, we could change the cards again. We have new cards in here, production towards settlers, but I will wait with that until I have Magnus established. It takes five turns to establish a governor. Within these five turns, no effect. So if I would remove now this forest, I wouldn't get the plus 50%. It always takes five turns. You can move him around. I could reassign him to another city, but it would mean he would take another five turns to establish in the new city. And here I will kill this one. Nice. Getting error score out of barbarian kills. Barbarian encampment kills. And civic I will put into this. Because I will get the other one next turn. I could change to builder production. Wouldn't be bad, but it's fine. I will I like one production in all my cities because I have three cities and especially the one with lower population can use it. We met someone, the Congo. They are over here. Oh, come on. So we have neighbors in both directions. If you have very close neighbors in many directions, expect war and build a few more units. Warriors are a great defense. Also, archers are really great. The best military early on are just a few warriors and a few archers. Archers have a range of two and therefore can attack units without getting attacked back. As you have seen, every time I smacked into a unit with my warrior, my warrior also took damage. Ranged attacks ignore that. Of course, this goes both ways. If my units get attacked by enemy ranged attacks, well, I will not hit them back. I have a lot of science now because I finished this campus. Very nice. But now I will finish the granary so this city grows faster. 
And I got another governor title. I will improve Magnus right away because I want this provision here. What we talked about right before. And I will work on political philosophy now because I know I got the boost for this one. In four turns I really want to start on settlers here. So maybe I still finish this so I can switch the card in four turns for free. I could switch it right now, but I'm not building a settler. I want a builder first. Because I need builders to remove the forest. We could discover iron, that would be really good. Usually, if you have neighbors or lots of barbarians, go for archery. Because archers are a really good defense. If you have any questions, write them in the comments and there's a high chance that I will make a quick video about it. Or I'll just answer you if it's very simple. Considering I have no defense down here and there was a barbarian, I should probably build a warrior before the scout in here, uh, before the granary in here. So I will change to a warrior. Since I only have one single warrior and that one is even damaged. Here I wait with removing this. This would give me 36 production. But I wait because I want Magnus to be finished in here. I have another builder, I will move this one on this forest. And here I will start to build a settler. You move in my territory and then heal. I will wait another turn, Magnus still needs one turn. Now I can change. I want the settler production now. The rest can stay. And I will change to this. Now you see, from 12 turns it went down to 8 turns, because I have the card in here that gives 50%. I, this means, since this production goes towards the settler, it will get increased even more. And also because we have magnets in here, it got increased even more. This gives us a huge production. Let's chop it. We saved four turns. And another. We finished the builder, the settler in two turns. And did not lose population because we have Magnus on level two in here. Let's get another settler right away. We want to settle this land in here with the natural wonder. This guy will move over here. Now it's only minus four. Very nice. Maybe we should buy a scout. I think we should buy a scout because we have no scout and I really want to see more of the land and to be sure there are no barbarians in here. Also, oh, that was a bad movement. I should have moved on the cattle would be faster. Also, we have discovered this technology that reveals iron. Let's look if we have iron at the map. Oh, up here is iron, so that would also be really good. Maybe we go and settle this part first. Nah, the natural one is just too good. Let's move over there. We have trouble finding fresh water though nearby. Go for masonry because we got the boost for that already. This guy could remove the last forest. Sure, why not? We have good good other tiles to work. And can always build more builders. As long as you got Magnus in here, we want to use this.
went up to six again, probably because America settled something. America wants to buy our diplomatic favor. Since this is only really useful for a diplomatic victory, if you don't intend to try diplomatic victory out, which I do not recommend on your first playthrough, just sell the shit. It's, it's good money. Five money per turn? Oh yeah, that's worth it. That's a 50% boost for us. Oh, this is scary. This is scary. Let's bring the scout closer. Because this is scary. I don't want this to remove my stuff. Oh, and there is a, another a barbarian. Let's make sure not to move closer. Question is, anyway, where do we want to settle? Because we have no fresh water around this wonder, which is bad. Over here we have, but it's so flat and the tiles are so far. Heck, we can't even reach this with fresh water. Unless we are up here, but that's still so far. And I would like to get all these tiles. There is something that gives you the same benefit just as having fresh water, even though you technically don't have fresh water. And that is the aqueduct. That's a district that doesn't cost... Hmm. Okay, I have to explain that a little bit more. The aqueduct is placed like another district. It has to be adjacent to the city center and it has to be also adjacent to river or mountain. And then it gives you as much housing as if your city were adjacent to fresh water. If your city is already adjacent to fresh water, it will give you just two housing. Therefore, this one counts as a mountain. Therefore, I could build an aqueduct here later on to get the benefit. You see, this city now has only two housing. That's terrible. That's why I started right away on a granary. Ugh. 33 turns is a lot. Can I buy the granary? 260 money. I will have that rather soon. So I maybe just build something else and go for a granary later. Build a plus six holy side on this tile. But then I need to buy the tile. Better not do that. I could just start on a builder. You can never have enough builders. Or I could buy a tile and chop the granary out. That's also an option. If I would have planted better ahead, I wouldn't have spent the money on the scout, maybe. Waited with the settler for this warrior to arrive. And would have immediately bought the granary in here. That would have been better. That was a little mistake on my part. I will not move on here, I will move here to be safe. From the scout. In here we finished the warrior, we will go now for the granary since we started that long ago. A builder would also be nice since it expanded to the rice which is worth improving. This one can now here chop for the next settler. Nice! Only two turns. Two warriors up here making trouble. <laughs> Jesse and James. Oof. I don't want to fight both of them, so I will retreat into my territory. I will settle on these cows, because it has only minus 6, not minus 12, and it is fresh water. Nice. It has quite intense loyalty issues but we can solve that we wait for the settler to finish and then we move the magnus out because we have nothing else to chop and we leave him in for one turn so we don't lose population when finishing the settler but since we probably build other things afterwards we can move magnus to this city and save it from loyalty also once this city grows it will be in a better shape you could place a holy site or a campus. Let's place the holy site here and later the campus on this tile. But I want to remove the stone first because the stone, just like 
removing forest gives a lot of production immediately and it's a great tile to place a district. You do not get that production boost if you place a district over it. A district just removes whatever is beneath it without giving you anything. So I recommend place the districts that you can without removing anything first and then go with a builder and chop this. So I don't even need to finish this, I could now work on a builder. This is the unique improvement of India, don't worry about that. It's nice, but it's better to improve the cotton because we can sell them. This game is really going well. What annoys me is this city down here, because down there was good land. But we didn't know that the Congo are this close. But that's an option. I mean, we got friendship with America. We could start to build units and prepare to kill the Congo. That's something you could do. I would just heal in place for now, and this guy moves here to improve. Oh, there's a barb camp now up there. Let's build more units. Great, maybe a quick warrior. Because I really want to settle for these resources up here, but the barbarian encampment is a bit scary there. I could also settle down here at this river. That wouldn't be bad either. Let's do that then and clear the barbarian encampment first. Well, in here, the scout alone should be good enough, so I can withdraw this warrior to help over here and scout this land. Washington, America is friendly with us. They, they can't declare war on us. That's why I feel very safe for these cities, since he has a city down here as well. Therefore, it's unlikely for barbs to spawn this close. Barbs can only spawn at a place where you don't have active vision. Oh, yeah, we finished the settler, so let's move Magnus to Patna. And you see the loyalty is now positive and improving. Let's sell another luxury. More money is always good. Let's see how much Washington pays. Um, Washington, um, Teddy pays. For cotton because we will get more of that he doesn't pay anything probably because he has no money per turn he's kind of bankrupt and then the congo how much would they pay they would pay something let's sell them they're my enemies that's why i don't pay them don't sell the horses to them does he want horses he would pay me 11 gold cool Let's sell them 20 horses. Just remove this with a right click and ask again. Then you will adjust it to your new adjusted attribute. I don't mind if he has some horses. I'd rather take the free money. We got now 220. Uh, we got now enough money for the granary. Because I remember 260 was the cost. And now this city can finally grow. It has four housing. This is enough for a decent early game size. Also, since Yerevan is my city-state, if the Congo go to war with me, they will also go to war with Yerevan. Unless someone else puts more envoys than I have into this city-state. All the city-states that you are southern of, you see that highlighted over here, will go to war with ever who you are at war with. They will always fight for you, unless someone else overthrows you with more envoys. Here you can always check how many envoys you get per turn. Also some civics give you free envoys. For example, theology or military training, while defensive tactics and recorded history give you more governor titles, which means you can improve your governor or get a new one. See, we're already leading in this game. This is really how you get going in the game. Settle early 
and make sure to defend your settlements and to clear barbarian camps early if they are nearby before they become a bigger problem feel free to just give up and restart if things go wrong you learn the most out of things going wrong but then to struggle through is not always I mean sometimes you can struggle through and still come out on top but sometimes you learn more if you just try again and try again and see how else it could go there's no shame in restarting I will now start to research a few techs until I've got more boosts. Divide and rule a sound motto. Nice. Unite and lead a better one. We have unlocked a government. This means we can choose one of those. Just read through them and pick the one you like the most. You get this passive benefits, the two, and you get the cards, card slots visible here. Um, generally, classic republic and oligarchy are the smart choices. If you fear for war, or if you're not very sure if you would survive a war, go for oligarchy. Also, if you intend to attack someone, go for oligarchy. Otherwise, if you're safe and fine, go for classical republic. In our situation, I would go for Classical Republic. Because we have a friend, I'm not afraid of Congo, and, well, I'm a good player, I have so much experience in this game, that I don't necessarily need oligarchy for war. But when I was new to this game, I loved oligarchy, just because of the, the combat strength it gave my units. And here I will get in profit points. I will explain that in a moment. What else? You could start to build a wonder as well, that would be nice. Although we want one more settler. Maybe we keep this one in here. Let's do that. Because we want the settler up here. After the warrior has cleared this. The question is, where do we build the settler? We have Magnus in here. I think we still build it in the capital just without chops. I think I settle a bit closer to the mountain, but not too close, just in the middle is fine. So I get a lot of grasp on the good tiles with the 2-2. Two -two. Civic. Here, it doesn't matter much which Civic you go. Just read through them and figure out on your own which one you like. A good government in general later on is Merchant Republic. But as you can see it requires quite a lot of stuff and the cards down here are not bad. So go for just whatever you like. This city, nice. Could get a district or a granary because it's growing well. Or walls. Or a settler to settle even further down here. You see, here you have a lot of options. All are viable. I would go for a builder. I like builders. You could have also locked in the builder card. I wanted to explain to you profit points. Now, I haven't built any holy site. A holy site would give me profit points just as the science district gives me scientist points. In here you see the progression. Because we have a science district we get we get a little bit of science point. Once we have reached 60 we will get a great scientist which we can use for the benefit that is written here. Everyone is unique. So for profit points, I get a great profit, which allows me to found a religion. And for scientists, well, I get science stuff. For merchants, I get money stuff. For engineer, I get building stuff. Generals are good for war. Admirals are good for sea-based war. Writers, artists and musicians are great for tourism, the culture victory. Right now I'm leading in here and I'm also 
getting some progression in great profit points because I have this card in here. Also holy sites would give me that. On higher difficulty it's rather hard to get a great profit for a religion and not everyone in the game can have a religion. Right now you see no one else is getting points for a religion. This means we have a good chance to be the first here. Because here you can see only four religions can be founded in a six player game. And someone already got a religion because they built Stonehenge. Therefore only three more to go. Once four religions have been founded and you didn't get a profit, you will miss out on a religion completely. But unless you are going for a religious victory, don't worry, you can get all the other victories without having ever founded a religion. It's just fun to go for a religion, but not crucial. In here we go for a trader, because we need it for this boost. And I can explain how trader works. You see, our empire gets better and better, we produce so much more in everything by now. And that's the goal of the game, just get better and better, improve your land, build more cities, expand, build units to defend yourself or maybe attack someone. There will also be a video linked where I explain how warfare works. This guy will settle and the unit will move into the city, improving its defensive strength. You see, other cities, this one has 10, this one has 20, this one has 20 because the unit is in there. If there were a stronger unit in there, it would go even higher. This one has 12. Why does this one have 12 and this one only 10? Because this one is on a hill. A hill gives an additional defense bonus. That's why these two also only have 10. In here... Hmm, some districts in here would be nice. I think I'll just go for the granary. It sometimes doesn't really matter. Like in this city, the granary is a good choice, the monument is a good choice, maybe a district would be a good choice, a builder would be a good choice, or maybe just the unit would also be a good choice. Just do what you like and learn and see what happens. Oh, we have iron over here, that's really nice. Explore more over here. Oh, there's a lake. Lakes also give fresh water. If you go for the lens, to settle the lens, you see these tiles are green because they are adjacent to lakes. This tile and this tile is red because it's too close to another city. Oh wow! Oh wow! America, really? I don't like that because I was looking forward to get these two rice tiles. I mean, don't get me wrong. The tiles up here are good. But this really blocks off all expansion to the south. But the land that is here is really good. You want to aim at like 8 cities. With 8 cities you should be able to win quite well for any victory type. Of course if you get to 12 cities, oh wow, even better. And we enter the classical age and get a golden age. I will explain that in a separate video. Of course here we should move away because we are building a trade route and we have only the boost left. So let's go, let's actually research archers maybe. Our scout can explore some more. You also see here the military strength of other people. America is quite strong, so we should really not do war with them, should avoid that. This guy is fully healed, can deal with this barbarian. So that was pretty much, that's the core gameplay. There are more districts like the entertainment complex that is, I think I will make a separate video. So before we end this, I will say out of which things I make a separate video to show, which is in the description. I will quickly explain it. If you're not interested in that, you can also just click on the links and be fine with this video. I will not do more than that in this. I will end 
this video here after explaining that. So I will make a video about districts, how they work and which district is for what use. I will make a video about war where I show how units in warfare work, where we probably attack the Congo a little bit later in this same game. I will make a video about religion, where we get the great prophet and use him to found a religion, where I explain that. I will make a video where I explain the golden age, how it works, how you get it, and what's the benefit of era score, how to deal with that. I will make a video about tourism, about how to go for a culture victory. Because, you see, you need tourism for the culture victory. Yeah, okay, I get culture, I understand that. And there is even a district for culture, but there is no district for tourism. How does that work? I will explain that as well in a separate video. And I will explain starting locations and what to consider when settling a settler, uh, when settling a city in detail. I will explain all these things in separate videos. Feel free to check them out or to just keep it as it is and explore on your own. See you next time.